Welcome to the second episode of Series 32, everyone. We actually get to creating our characters this episode, so we can't wait for you to hear how they all come together. But before we get to that, here are some announcements. First up, it's Audioverse Finals time, everyone. There are a few shows on the OneShot Network that deserve your attention. First up, it's Audioverse Awards finalists time, everyone. Uh, there are a few shows on the One Shot Network that deserve your attention. Campaign Skyjacks, Skyjacks Courier's Call, The Broadswords, and a show that I have a little something to do with, A Horror Borealis, all have some nominations in there somewhere. So this process is getting things from all of the nominations down to 10 nominations per category. So... This process does require a bit of picking and choosing some unfamiliar shows and people because they make you nominate 10 items per category. But if you stick to the one-shot shows and then branch out from there, you'll be in good standing. Uh, might I also suggest keeping an eye out for nominations for the audio fiction show Valence? Uh, it's definitely well-deserved if you haven't heard it before. Um, and they've got quite a few nominations, so that might actually pad out your nominations list quite a bit in some categories. In other news, keep an eye out this coming Friday, October 16th, because I am going to start live streaming a brand new campaign on Twitch. If you head to my channel at twitch.tv slash lordneptunerb, that's R as in Ryan, B as in Bolter, and follow, you can easily get right to the action. Starting at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, I'll be leading a really great group of folks through the session zero to the campaign. What game will we be running, you may be asking? Well, you may have heard me talk about it a few times on the show, but we're going to be running the latest version of Chimera the Powered by the Apocalypse game that I have been developing with Amar Amaraz. And we are going to be blending together three genres, fantasy, superheroes, and magical girls. And then seeing what world that makes and creating characters from those three genres. It should be a really fun time, so definitely check it out. Will it be posted about it a lot when it comes go time? I believe that's all the announcements we have for today's episode. With all of that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Enjoy. Right. So, uh, what's everybody thinking of uh, choosing? Okay, I kind of want to do a glean. Glean. Okay. Cool. Uh-huh. cool as uh-huh. heck. Uh, um, Amelia was right. I'm gonna go with Eno. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Eugenio, what are you gonna make this time? Well, so <sighs> I want to either make a Peacecrafter and Olren because we don't have those on our I show. I wanted to, I was between Peacecraft and Olren too. So Amazing. we should just, okay. Because <laughs> we don't have know? one on the show. That's exactly what I was That's like. Exactly I want to know. Yeah, I want to know. Okay, I want, oh, then I will pick Olren. I want to be a crystal. Okay, great. I, I, I will do Peacecraft, person. which is great because the very first body that Atash inhabited was an Olren. So I've already dove into their mm. abilities a little bit. So this is perfect. All right, Olren nice. for me. Crystal boy. All right, so since I chose Eno, uh, it gives me a distinction. Now I have to choose one of four houses. Uh, yep, your families, uh, the ruling yeah. families there. So, so each of them has sort of a role in the culture that they oversee. Mm-hmm. So you can do science or you can do, um, I don't have it in front of me. I went I now, went crystal now, boy, I can't see anything. <laughs> oddly enough, okay, so there's the Nove, uh, which is in charge of defense. 
the ore, which is in charge of science efforts. The tin uh, considers itself the most practical of the houses. Uh, it's used to uh, material acquisitions. Make sure the empire is fed. Okay. And the the seals, CL, I don't know, KL, uh, they maintain governance over magic mm-hmm. in, you know, space. Um, so literally, uh, aside from the, the cat people thing, um, the one reason I actually chose this one was uh, because of the ore house, yeah. uh, which is in charge of the science efforts. And they were originally... Uh, commonly including, uh, they did like terraforming, but now they're concerned with stopping the Burns advance, which is uh, probably my my main drive for wanting to create a character in this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's stop that burn. Yeah, and what's what's sort of interesting, sidebar, can I do a sidebar about magic oh, <laughs> in this world? Yes. Go for it. Yeah, so what's really, really cool about magic in this world is that um, most people, People, most places aren't inherently magical. Magic is actually a resource that you can very much have to mine and then process and then use in your spells. So all magic in the universe is basically, or or in this galaxy, is basically comes from a, uh, a substance called plasma, which is actually mined in plasma wells. Um, which works a lot like um, fossil fuels that we have like on Earth. So basically these omniscient beings that Eugenio referenced earlier, like Black Ice Koa is one of these beings. Plasma comes from when one of those beings, when they die, their body breaks down into this source of plasma that's deep under the Earth. um, And then people go and mine it up. Um, So... It was great before the burn came and they were just discovering all these plasma wells and it was awesome. And, you know, everybody had magic and everything came to rely on magic. But when the burn happened, a lot of those periphery planets that had these wells started to get burnt up. And then basically for the first time, they're like, "Uh oh, we're going to run out of plasma. Um, So that's a very real problem um, in the galaxy right now. It's, um, you know, using these plasma wells, plasma is so expensive and if you find a new well it's a whole reason to start a war or you know Mm. people will trade and bargain and steal um, just to get access to magic because it's become sort of a crutch for a lot of people in a laxus um so Mm -hmm. like the the enos you know discovery uh and use of magic is is huge and has a lot of um yeah a lot of complicated elements to it so Mm. yeah i just love that you have to like mine for magic no, yeah. ugh, it makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. Okay. So we've got our species. Yeah, I had to pick my reliquary too. Oh, which one did oh, you pick? Which one did you go with? Yeah. Um, I went with the is it Zalus? It makes the bear more bombastic while also making them more prone to jealousy. Oh, uh, yeah, that'd okay. be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is cool, too. In the back, um, they have a pronunciation guide in the compendium. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Uh, the reliquaries are all in the guide because yeah. some of them are sort of odd. It definitely, yeah, I had some uh, well, <laughs> from stumbling I the meant- first time I was reading through some of this. <laughs> Kathuk, for some reason. I just couldn't say Kathuk. Um, the apostrophe scared me, I guess. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I do like that it... Um, Gives you example names. Oh, yeah, too. that's like the naming. Yeah. Yeah. They're really great about that. Oh, I got it right. It was Alice. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Uh, so which one did you choose? I missed it. Um, I went with the Zalus, which is makes the bearer more bombastic while also making them more prone to jealousy. Nice. I saw the word bombastic and I was like, sweet. Yes. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> great word. <laughs> Sold. All right. Any other options for species that we need to call out? No, Not I yet. Think, yeah, just okay. Cool. Looking through. Um, the next one is sort of interesting. Culture is a really um, cool part of character creation. Um, so that's the next tab here. Mm-hmm. 
Next. All right. Yeah. So the the way that this is presented uh, in the character mancer is uh, you can choose from a bunch of different existing systems uh, and it'll give you information as you click on them. Just like with the species, the descriptions will come up on the side. Um, you can also create a custom system. Celeste already mentioned, you know, the galaxy is a big place, even though it's finite, it's still a big place. So you can absolutely create your own system that has, you know, the, the type of background that you want. Um, but what's important here is that there are basically going to to be four uh, markers about any given civilization uh, that tell you what kind of civilization, what kind of system, it, or culture, not civilization, what kind of culture and system there is there. And those four markers are also going to tell you a little bit about how you're going to build your character. So the four markers, which are ultimately what, uh, what I think we'll want to look at now, are uh, what kind of borders do they have? Are the borders open to anyone? Or are they super isolationist or somewhere in between? How diverse are the people of that system? Is it just truly just the Kithooks? Is it super homogeneous? Uh, is it super inclusive? There's a little bit of everybody there. Or is it sort of inclusive but partitioned? So each different species has sort of their area of the system. The third marker it talks about economics, uh, which is basically just how rich is the system in general. Very straightforward. Uh, and finally, density. Uh, is this an urban system with lots of big cities? Is this a rural system with lots of farms? Or is it a suburban system with lots of strip malls? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally a thing in Burn Bright. Totally yeah, absolutely yeah, planets like that. <laughs> joking, but also not at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Some parks and soccer fields. And yeah. That's I right. Mean, That's right. <laughs> for, for me, it's pretty easy to make this choice because since I'm playing an all round, um, you know, their their home planet is Marthong. So Marthong is one of the systems that they've already provided as an option. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to get creative. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that my character grew up on on the planet um so i'm going to select them and their borders are isolationist so because they constantly are fighting to keep other people out um do want to take their stuff uh density suburban um so basically there are you know main cities but there is some space for people to live and grow um at their own rate um diversity homogenous again because it's mostly all rands there since most other species can't be trusted in their opinion um because they because you know the the home planet has plasma wells and they also have this special aura that helps magic and it's yeah homogenous um and economics then wealthy because marthong does have all of these resources um so uh, i think my character is uh, used to a certain amount of wealth yeah there are each of the different each of the four markers and each of the categories within each marker has a different mechanical thing that it will do for you, right? You might get more or fewer mm -hmm. special uh, species special abilities. Uh, obviously, the wealth system, uh, the wealth marker is going to tell you how much starting argent you have to buy mm -hmm. supplies. Um, but what I love about this, and when we did our session zero for, for Burning Daylight, I didn't know any of that. Right. I didn't I hadn't actually had a chance to look at what each of the markers would do for the rest of my character creation process. And it didn't I mean, it matters. Of course, it matters. But <laughs> as we were creating it, it, it wasn't so important. What was important to the five of us as we created these characters was the story of where we were from. Right. Yeah. I knew that I wanted my uh, to have to have fled their home world and ended up sort of somewhere relatively rural, living a sort of quiet conservationist life out on the farm uh, and and whatever. So I picked a system that did that. And then the character mancer filled in the mechanical things mm -hmm. as I kept going. Nice. So, yeah. you know, each of the existing systems has a little paragraph what they're about. And frankly, that's how I would choose. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to go in and game the system and make sure you get, you know, as many special abilities, you're welcome to do that. But this game is so story based yeah. uh, and it does it so well that like, I don't know, read your paragraph, your, your system <laughs> blurbs and go from there. Well, they also do such a good job of balancing um, everything here in in this already. Um, all of the proposed systems, and they already give you like what was like fifteen to pick from or something. There are a ton already built in there, and also in the rules they talk about if you want to build your own uh, culture, uh, they mm. give you guidelines on how to do that. So even if you do want to create a character from none of the known systems and you want to make your whole own world, um, they definitely give you the tools to do that. This is so fun getting to make a character. Yeah, I'm so happy you're finally getting to do it. <laughs> I've just been helping people make characters. <laughs> okay. So my thought process was if I am a person that wants 
to stop the burn, mm-hmm. I would want to collaborate with as many people as possible. Great. Um, so I would want like an open borders and an inclusive system or diversity. Um, maybe not poor, but at least intermediate economics. Probably urban. I could probably go suburban. And really one of the only ones that I saw that met those criteria was to sell a to sell a system um which sounds interesting looks like it's it's got like a, a mining home world or city or something like that yeah i'm trying to click into it but if i remember correctly Sela is where the arc the alliance of relief and Confirm- uh, conservation they have a, a base there in an old mine where why is it not oh here it is um yeah, 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 yeah. So this, this, so the ARC comes up uh, in Burning Daylight, and Celeste can speak to it way more than I can because I don't know yet. But they're a pretty, they're a pretty major organization in in your storytelling. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So basically, yeah, basically, the Alliance of Relief and Conservation was um, started during the last Bright um, when you know w- wars and exploration and everything. There are beginning to be a lot of problems in a galaxy with a lot of different species who wanted a lot of different things from a lot of different places. Uh, so mm-hmm. the ARC was started um, and was largely helped along by species like the Peacecraft, whose mission is all about helping others um, and you know stopping war efforts. Um, So the ARC is kind of this big, like, heroic organization that popped up that basically takes talented adventurers and individuals and gives them missions and assignments to help other people. So it's like a giant volunteer hero organization out there. Um, And it started off as this big, awesome thing, but when the burn hit, everybody got scattered and preoccupied with, you know, helping themselves and their peoples first. So the ARC still exists, but it's sort of this scattered volunteer system that has chapters in different places and there's not this overarching structure that there used Mm -hmm. to be. Um, So there are ARC agents and like, you know, little bastions across the galaxy, but there's no big effort there. Um, But the ARC is a great way for new GMs to burn bright too, to to introduce missions um, and to give your, your adventurers or heroes a reason to be together and a reason to do good out in the galaxy. So they're a pretty cool, um, go to in terms of sort of your adventuring guild, you know, uh, cool. in Alexis. All right. So I'll go with the Tessella system. Yeah. I am going to go with the Cavabell asteroid fields. I feel like Ooh, cool. because it said that they were, uh, asteroids filled with water and that sounded cool to me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah there you go. They were born in water. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah that would make sense. Uh, and I, another, uh, just to be weird, and actually I, I sort of chose at random that had some different markers than my character in Burning Daylight, but turns out this Peacecraft has spent a lot of time uh, on the Panlin system, which is yet another ocean world. Uh, and uh, let's see, it is a selectively bordered, suburban, partitioned, intermediately wealthy system. So there you hmm. go. Cool. Where was your character from Celeste? Oh, um, so I I check, I picked the Marthong system. Oh, yes, um, that's right. Yeah, so uh, built into these given species uh, or given cultures, um, there are a lot of indicators for if you want to just go to the home world of some of the eight playable species. So I went ahead and picked uh, Marthong, which is built into mm-hmm. the Olren backstory. Basically, that's the planet they, they hail from. Oh, very um, cool. Yeah, so I went ahead and just, just selected that. All right. Because um, I like easy choices. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, it looks like after the culture is the story path. Ooh, yes. There it is. Oh, my gosh. Uh-oh. This one is hard to pick because they have so many good ones. Oh, my goodness. Uh. Yeah. Um, so basically, yeah, this the when you're choosing your story path, you are choosing that, you know, that B plot that is happening to mm-hmm. your character, you know, while you're going along uh, and plot A. So these stories uh, speak a lot to sort of what you want for your character or the general direction you think they're going in in terms of their growth or their story. Um, and these are things um, it's built into the GM section talking about how. 
Over the course of about every two hours of play, you should hit a story path for one of the characters. You should hit one of these story path events. Um, so that's something that's that's really encouraged for the GMs to build these little plots inside of the bigger plots that are happening. Um, it's also you know talked about how at the beginning and end of every session, you should as a group review your story paths um, and talk about what your next one is, um, you know, and your your expectations for it. So it's really encouraged that this is a, a big part of your character. Hmm. And I mean, they're all over the place from Gosh, yeah, there's so many good ones. Battle, artifact unleashed, face fear, gain followers, love on the run, recover. Mm -hmm. There's so much. And these are all very evocative mm -hmm. too. Like you can you can easily see that there's a lot of avenues probably um just from the one sentence that they have here. Yeah. Anybody seeing anything that's catching their eye in particular? I think I have I think I have mine. Uh, so we talked about, uh, you know, the Peacecraft are these these uh, giant mechs, these robots uh, that a lot of their special abilities already have to do with altering themselves and having gun cannons appear on their arms and things like that. Um, so I think I'm going to go with the upgrade story path, which is about uh, upgrading your body uh, and its performance capabilities. And I think uh, I think that uh, Alienware 17, which is the name of my piece craft, because uh, yes. it was the first thing that I I saw. Uh, I think I think their uh, their story path is going to not be about adding more tech to their body, but about what happens if a peacecraft decides that they want to introduce biological components to their body. Um, so I'm going to go with the upgrade story path uh, and every story path has uh, I can't remember if we've already mentioned this, but it has five distinct steps um, a, a beginning step that sort of kicks off the kicks off the story for your character, obviously then an ending step as the fifth one. Um, and a lot of these will have ending steps that have some, some possibilities if you succeed at whatever you've been trying to do, or if you fail, uh, and there'll be different character advancement options based on whether you succeed or fail at your plan. And then usually three intermediate steps. Sometimes the steps, the order doesn't matter or they're a little more flexible. Sometimes the intermediate steps are a, a little more codified. Obviously, this is still a narrative game, so everything is sort of up in the air. But <laughs> um, while you all have a look for yours, uh, just really quickly, the upgrade story path steps are the first one is to make a plan for how uh, you're going to I'm going to upgrade, uh, discover a new way to modify it, maybe meet a new scientist that's going to help me with it. Uh, the second step is to actually do the upgrading of my body. Uh, the third step is to upgrade my brain or my brain chemistry, or I guess my processor since I'm a peacecraft. The fourth event after the first two quote unquote small modifications is to make a big change. And the final step of mine is to go beyond mortal. I've experimented and changed, and now I'm really pushing the limits uh, that that changes me in some significant way. And as I make each of those steps, I either get to increase dice size, I get new special abilities, what have you. Oh, I love I love that, especially with the whole like the peace crafter, you know, trying to find a way to stop like dying permanently in the burn. Maybe that's some kind of motivation there. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. We've tried all the technological approaches. Maybe yeah. there's something to this organic thing. <gasps> Ooh. I picked Bond. Yeah. Where I try to become best friends with someone. Yay! <laughs> um, with, one of, with one of the player characters. Yeah. With one of the player characters. I like it. Um, I, I thought this would go really well with my jealousy thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought that would be fun to play out. So um, my first event, we should hang out more. <laughs> um, my second, third, and fourth are interchangeable. Yeah. Um, night out. Never told anyone this and trust you with my life. And then the final one is I basically ask them, so are we best friends? <laughs> and, uh, hope that they're my best friend and I'm also their best friend because it's really awkward. When it's not the same. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, for myself, um, I actually uh, have an idea for the character that went a little bit in a different direction when I saw this one. Um, double life. 
Mm. Mm. So I want to say that my character maybe had some uh, unpopular scientific theories about the burn Mm -hmm. and uh, was kind of, uh, is kind of on the outs with the, the, the other Eno uh, scientists. And uh, maybe, maybe they are just trying to kind of hide while doing their research on the down low. Yeah. Effectively. Um, so this one is, uh, the first event is the new you where you have to create your, your fake identity. Uh, the second event is fake ID where you actually have to have, uh, fake identification, like government, uh, space driver's license, I guess. (laughs) Um, fool someone, you know, is the third event, uh, where like, if you actually reveal your identity to them, it could put you or them in danger. Um, fourth event is your alter ego's purpose. Uh, did you finish the mission that required it? Did you get away from whoever was chasing you, etc.? Um, and then the fifth event, who do you become? Uh, and now that you no longer need your cover identity, will you become your alter ego, ego again, or are you content to let them die? Um, and you can get some rewards either way, which is interesting. Some of these, I mean, it's so awesome. The the diversity you can have with these, you know, like the one Amelia mm-hmm. picked is all about making a relationship with another player in the game or like the one you picked, Ryan. It's like, oh my gosh, like who, you know, building this whole elaborate backstory and then like, yeah, Eugenio's is about questing to, you know, change them fundamentally who they are. Yeah. Um, I think the one I'm going to pick uh, is uh, create masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Um, so you are determined to create an amazing piece of art. Could be a painting, song, software, weapon, uh, anything that can emotionally move others. Um, yeah, for some reason, I, I really see my Olran as um, wanting to leave the plant, like craft the perfect weapon. Specifically, like swords come to mind, like my, you know, go on my Hattori Hanzo quest to get out there and like find, (laughs) you know, the most beautiful and the most perfect material or way to make this weapon, Mm. um, I feel like would be a great reason why my Ulrun has left the home world, you know, to be inspired and to discover, you know, the the perfect thing, like it's out there, you know, in the galaxy and I have to find it before it's consumed by the burn. So the first event for that is inspiration. Uh, so you you find something that inspires your work of art. You know, it's that initial spark. Uh, the second event, blueprint. Um, so you make your plan for what you're going to make. Um, third event, missing ingredient. So you determine and you find that specific thing that's going to make your masterpiece what it is. The fourth event is completing your masterpiece. Um, and then the fifth event is uh, presenting your masterpiece. Um, and what's cool about this, there's a bunch of different options about how this can go. So there's a re- different reward if you sell it. There's a reward if you give it to someone. Um, and there, there's a different reward if you keep it for yourself. Ooh. So it's kind of cool to see, yeah, what, what you decide to do with this thing you've made uh, actually determines, you know, how your character advances. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. We, we have wildly uh, different and interesting uh, story paths. It's, yeah. it's, it is such a fun and interesting challenge as a GM to, you know, once you get these story paths, uh, to weave them, especially especially for someone like me who's running a module for this game. So weaving mm-hmm. these story paths into the world of the module in a way that makes sense and is meaningful is an interesting challenge um, as a GM when running Burn Bright. Hmm. All right, so skills. skills. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is where it gets a little crunchy. <laughs> yes, it is a little crunchy. So I will say um, for to help you all out while you're making the sheet here, basically at the end of this, you want all those numbers in the bottom to be zero. Oh, okay. okay. So, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so don't change things on the drop down. Um, go ahead and change things in the, in the zeros columns. Um, that will help you out a lot. Oh. Yeah, there's a couple this this screen is a, is a little yeah. quirky uh, and there's like a couple of ways that you can achieve the same thing, but only like one and a half of them will make it look nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, and okay. this is something that I, I do know the Roll20 team is constantly developing and working on to improve, um, mm-hmm. which is sort of nice when you build a game for an online platform, you can actually update it and constantly make it better instead of, you know, it's oh, no, it's printed in a book. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's gone. <laughs> yeah. And oh, they- interesting. So I see when you hover over them, it says like plus one any or plus one. Yeah. Yeah. Mental. So okay. So if I want to use that one, I put it in. Okay. I think I got it. Okay. So there are uh uh four, six, eight, ten, twelve, five dice. Uh, uh, five die sizes, Mm -hmm. right? And your, and there are six skills per category, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So you can never have lower than a D4 in anything. Um, So that's why everything is already set to a D4. Mm -hmm. So it's already assuming that you have a D4 in everything. Okay. Now, again, the nice thing about doing this to the character mancer is what this sheet has done for each of us individually is it took the culture choice that we made and maybe our species choice possibly, I can't remember, uh, and it took those choices and already tells us uh, in that little box chart on the bottom how many of each dice size we get Mm -hmm. uh, to upgrade. So, you know, my numbers are going to look a little bit different because of my my culture choice than yours, but they're all down there and it tells you exactly how you can divvy them up, Uh, you know, whether the D6 pool that you have to divvy up can be in any type of skill, if it has to be in a mental skill, a physical skill, a social skill... And okay. here, each of the 18 skills have descriptions, but again, it's sort of, this is very narrative. It's sort of about how you can imagine using these skills, right? So when my character did that, that, that point of shaming damage, mental shaming damage the other day, I, I think I used presence, which is a social skill, but I could have very easily used performance if I wanted to. I could have used empathy if I had made a case to Celeste for, you know, understanding how this person thinks and that's how I'm getting to them. So the, the specific descriptions of each of the skills are helpful, but don't let them be restrictive as you think about how you're divvying up your skills. Do I need to check the box next to a skill so one way to get the numbers to be nice and zero at the end is to check the box for any skill that you're going to change the drop down on so for example if you want to change your deceive to a d6 because you have a d6 in your chart at the bottom check the box and then do the Mm -hmm. drop down menu and that will count it down from your chart okay Will it only pull it from the any or like, cause I, I have a physical that I can pick a D 10 so, in. Uh, that's a really good question that I don't know the yeah, answer to. So, so let's find what, out. <laughs> what I, so like if I don't check it and I it, like it pulls, do the drop down to D 10, it, yep. it pulls it from that one. From but that if category. I check the any, uh, it, so, oh, so if I check like, any, it does it from the any. Yep. So see, I'm still learning. So yes, the checkbox is, is telling the system that you want to pull it out of your any row okay. if you don't it. check it it'll try and pull it from the specific skill type row so physical mental or social okay um then the last thing that is also a little quirky is that a lot of the culture options will uh will give you on the far right that column just says plus one uh mm-hmm. some of the culture options will say increase any die size by one it doesn't say you get a d6 in a mental skill it just says increase any on this character mancer, the way that you'll do that, if you have, let's say, for example, I have the number two in my plus one any. So that first column of zeros, I'll go in there and change that to a one where I want to increase the die size by one. Mm. Gotcha. OK, so you won't change it in the drop down. You'll Correct. Look. In that case, if I'm using the plus one and not a specific die size, use the column of zeros. Can you set it to a die size and then? Add plus one to that. Yes, yes, and then do you the can. Plus one, yeah. Yep, Excellent. absolutely, you can. And what's also super cool is that uh, so the drop down and then the column of plus ones will all add themselves together, and all the way on the far right, you see the visual representation of the die. That should ultimately represent what the die is. So if you change it to a d6 and add a plus one, that far right blue column should show a d8. So hard to pick. I'm good. And, oh, I, and I'm sitting here gabbing and haven't made a single choice. So here we go. <laughs> so I am trying to choose between a D10 for a physical skill. I can't choose between athletics, melee, or skullduggery. Ooh, stealth is good too. Darn it. There's too many good skills. 
That's a good problem to have during character creation. It is. And, mm-hmm. and remember, you're going to end up having to use your bad skills, too, if you want those Nova points. Yeah. Right? So so what I've actually learned uh, from our couple of sessions of Burning Daylight is if there's a skill uh, that you know your character is going to want to use a lot. Uh, yes, there is something to be said for giving it a, a large die size, but there's also something to be said for picking one skill that you think you might use a lot and leaving it as a D4 or making it a D6 because mm-hmm. that will make it that much easier for you to go to that die size and check it off of your Nova point list. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. I may love to, you know, uh, uh, play the tuba, but I might be terrible at it. So maybe my perform <laughs> is still at a D4, but I do it all the time, right? I don't know what I want my character to, to like do. Like I don't have like a job. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, a lot of gleans. Uh, you can go back to kind of species inspirations are inventors or artists. Um, so perhaps there's there's something along those lines. Okay, just want to make friends. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're a performer. Who you knows? You love slam poetry. I don't. <laughs> you you love improv. You just want to make friends, so you join oh, improv no. troops all across Alexis. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. I know. I'm I'm definitely building this all around like like a Klingon. Like, let's be real. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. Uh. I'm like decorum, yes. <laughs> Presence, yes. I love it. All right. Um, I've got Let's three see. more dice and two plus ones to assign somewhere. I haven't picked any social. No, I have. I've got one social skill at a D12. So, and really, you want to have one of each die type across all your skills, right? Yeah. So one of the one of the things that you uh, that it talks about in advancement is that you can never not have a die type somewhere in your 18 skills. Okay. So if you only have, let's say, you know, one D six skill after several, you know, story arc and enhancements, Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot upgrade that D six to a D eight until you upgrade a D four to a D six first. Okay. Um, And, and, uh, you know, that's a good way to keep your character balanced, but also it just mechanically means uh, that you can continue to get Nova points. If you eliminate a die type entirely from your sheet, then you can't, you can no longer gain Nova points because yeah. you won't be able to roll one of each die type anymore. That makes sense. Cause I've got a, a D I've got one D eight that I was, Oh no, actually I have two, but say I only had one and I applied that somewhere and add mm-hmm. a plus one to it. Now I have no D eights, right? And I'd never be able to get a Nova until I actually level up and. Exactly right. Okay. Exactly so that right. makes sense. So, so they, so they just head that off at the pass by saying you always have to have at least one of each die type somewhere. Yeah. doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't have to be in any particular type of skill, but it's got to have at least one somewhere among the 18. Okay. That makes sense. Aha. There it is. All right. Okay. One other thing that I just discovered that I did not remember from before, uh, if anyone is having issues getting your plus one column to go down after you've put ones in, I had to mm-hmm. actually hit enter after I put the one in rather oh, than just okay. tabbing off of it. Um, I do not remember that being the case when we did our sessions hero for burning daylight, but who knows <laughs> they're fiddling all the time. I will say the, the roll 20 team has been really, really great and really responsive to us. Uh, you know, letting them know when we discover, uh, we discover bugs or just when we're, when we say, you know, Oh, this actually is a little confusing or this might uh, be easier to work with if it looked something like like this they've been really great about responding to that and sort of taking it to their developers and mm-hmm. obviously not implementing every suggestion we have what a nightmare but uh but they've been, <laughs> they've been great to us about that oh there we go to use mm-hmm. to get the nova points does it have to be one skill of each size in that skill group or nope. just in general just okay because i was like i can't make these math <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. like be. no matter what i do i don't have a 10 here <laughs> yeah no, you could do it all in you could do it all in mental or you could do you know two from each uh uh gotcha. subgroup cool. yep oh goodness okay cool and as a reminder, I know we already said this, but it bears repeating as a reminder, uh, you don't have to succeed on the roll. You just have to make the roll. Yeah. Cool, cool. Plenty of D4s, which is by design. Yes. 
Okay, I just have and usually have a good a good chunk of d6s as well. You'll start off with. Oops. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have to look on the right hand side. I only got one d10. <laughs> but it, I I can see it being useful in a lot of situations too. So uh, my my stealth is a d10. Yeah, I went hard into the social skills. Yeah, I I kind of leaned in different areas that I thought I was going to a little bit. Uh, but I think that's interesting. Yeah, I like um, my Ulran. It I didn't have any like plus one bonuses on anything, so it it was all oh. like. It's it's kind of cool. They're super even across the board. I feel like I have re I'm really real well represented in physical, social, and mental just based on my background and everything. So nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. My nice. my D twelves. I've got two of them. Uh, one in deceive, and one in knowledge. Ooh, you have, oh, you have two. I, I only had yeah. I only had one. I I plus one. One of yeah. the I had no plus ones. That's so weird. That's so interesting. <laughs> ah. what, uh, remind me, Celeste, you're, what system are you from? So I'm from Marthong, which is Marthong. The, the home right, world right, right. Uh, of the Olran. Mm. Yeah, so I have one D12, which I put in melee, because I imagine I'm, I'm, I am Uma Thurman. Well, you want to be able to <laughs> use those swords. Yeah, exactly. I need to know. <laughs> but then I also, it was cool because I put a bunch of stuff into decorum. So, because yeah. I imagine, you know, my, my rules of fighting um, are, you know, a big deal in my head. And I probably have a, yeah, a warrior's code, you know, coming from Olran and, you know, having mm -hmm. that, that military honor culture. Yeah. Nice. That's interesting. What am I good at? I just clicked away some from points mine. points in Skullduggery, too. Gotta love it. Uh, oh, I'm very good at computers and engineering. Those yeah. are my high ones. Oh, know. nice. I'm, I'm mediocre at computers and, and fairly okay. Uh, D8 with engineering. I don't understand oh, computers. <laughs> a, a Tash doesn't either. I feel that. But I did put points in engineering because I, ah. I, you know, I think I'm mechanical engineering sort of, you know, mm -hmm. run my totally. forge, make my weapons. Totally. That's interesting. Yeah, I've got good scores in uh, perform and presence. Nice. nice. Improv, I'm telling you. I put a D8 <laughs> in suave. Oh, I have yeah. a D8 in suave too. Nice. Yeah. Heck yeah. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> this no. is, this no, is so far uh, a very different character than I'm used to playing. Great. Very cool. Love that. that. Love that. But I'm very invested in their story so far. Yeah. <laughs> well, do we want to go ahead and move on to abilities? Because there's a lot of options. To be. <laughs> there, yeah. There's so many cool options. All right, uh -huh. let's do it. They're right. awesome. So this one's a, uh, also, uh, I will say this one, this page of the character mancer uh, probably is, is going to be adjusted uh, as time goes on. Um, because right now it's the only page, as far as I can tell, that doesn't automatically sort of uh, tell you exactly how many of each type of ability you are allowed to choose. Um, oh. So this is also determined by culture, uh, but unlike the skills tab, you'll have to go back to your culture uh, and look at, I believe it's the diversity marker that tells you uh, how many special abilities and how many Nova abilities you can choose when you start out. So for example, okay. uh, my culture is uh, has partition diversity, uh, which gives me one special ability and two Nova abilities to start. It looks like there's one from economics too. Oh, it could be. Yeah, could be. I've, yeah, I've got I've got one from density. And oh, I've okay. So I was. It's all over the place then. One from uh, diversity, and ooh, two nova abilities. Oh, uh, there you from go. Diversity as well. Um, yeah, the I, other thing is that if you have free ones based on either your uh, species or sometimes, so for example, one of my story events uh can once i've completed it gives a special special yeah. ability uh so those are already included in here even if you haven't gotten to that step yet okay. the the species automatic ones and your story ones will already be included on this list yeah so i've got my species one here and this is interesting because it says during character creation you can increase the die sizes of two skills by one Oh. And I can actually swap those out and change the skills to which these increase is apply uh, after an eight hour rest. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So it I sounds like I can that. go back to the skills tab and add some elsewhere. 
I th- no, those are already populated in there. But I, it does it for you. But I, I got the culture for my economics to increase plus one to any two skills. I have a, so I bet you can actually do that a couple of ways. I bet it didn't include it in your skills tab for mm-hmm. the character mancer because yeah. it's something that you can adjust with every session or with every game day yeah. on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could certainly go in and change it in the skills tab here for where you want it to start. Uh, but we'll see when we populate the character sheets that you can also adjust them. Uh, obviously you can adjust them because you have to be able to advance your character, uh-huh. uh, but you can also do that manually in the finished character sheet. I'm going to do that right now. Yeah, do it. What's my I should rate? probably pick a species ability. Um. <laughs> oh, I think I get two species abilities. Um, one, two. Yes. Two species, two Nova. Uh-oh. There are some wild Ulran abilities. Did you know being made of crystal is weird? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh my god, shard body. Your body grows crystal shards that can be broken off and used as weapons. Oh, nice. Yes. I can use my own body spikes. Whoa. I wonder if that hurts. Wait, so I get one species ability, two Nova abilities. So, like, how do I know which ones are which? So, uh, if you look at the very top of not the tabs, but right below that, where you could hit next in previous, for example, in skills to switch. Oh, okay. There you can switch between special abilities and Nova. Man, all the Peacecraft ones are, like, guns. (laughs) (laughs) How do I... How do I know which ones are species abilities? Do I have to go back to my species to look at those? Uh, so in the species abilities part of this, there'll all be they should all be species abilities. And then if you hit next, then it'll give you the list of Nova abilities. It only has special abilities or Nova abilities. So like uh, of the special abilities, am I only seeing ones for my species? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I understand your question. Okay. Yes, it has filtered out okay. to our species for that. Yes. Gotcha. Cool. Well, I guess I'm going to go with gun turret be- just because it's the prerequisite for a cool one that I want late. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and I added plus one to my presence, to mm-hmm. make it a d6, and plus one to my perception to make it a d6. Cool. Nice. That works. I get to check two special abilities. Oh, wow, there's so many. Oh, I forgot. Ulrins are like really great pilots. So I have a lot of interactions uh, with the ship for combat. Makes me really good at driving it. For my Peacecraft, uh, we actually get two free special abilities. Uh, one of them I- is related to the the sort of uh, resurrection thing with the servers that, mm-hmm. that we talked about, that Celeste talked about when she described the, the species. The other one uh, is uh, the combine ability that allows smaller creatures to climb into my cockpit and... Ooh, and uh, <laughs> And move around uh, with me, and and there are other special abilities that I can take that, for example, let me heal the person that's in my cockpit or do other things with them. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Oh, interesting! Gosh, there's so many good ones. I here. know this is hard. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> too many good options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to take natural liar. Definitely help with your double life. I know, right? Whoa, I have an ability that just reduces the cost of all ship modules by 25%. Yeah. Oh, wow. So a big part of this. that one. Yeah. So a big part of this game is, you know, your ship and running it. So you have a ship character sheet that you all maintain as a group. Um, Mm -hmm. And modules are the little amenities that you can buy to, Mm -hmm. you know, increase uh, damage or health or like give your ship other benefits. So that is a pretty wild one that so as i sort of click through mine there's a lot of stuff that uh modifies the way that i can combine with other creatures that that go into the driver's seat in in me uh and now i'm beginning to think that maybe alienware 17's uh upgrade might have something to do rather than just putting disparate biological parts maybe it's deepening the com the combination Mm. ability and like actually becoming one creature with someone whoa So my Nova abilities uh, are also related to that. One of them allows me to uh, activate an ability for 10 minutes where whenever either person, me or the person in my cockpit, use a uh, make a skill roll, we can use each other's skill die sizes. That's cool. Um, And the other one, 
Oh, the other one <laughs> allows me to become a Megazord and combine with up to four creatures instead of just one. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, interesting. There's there's uh, abilities that have prerequisites, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for my special abilities, I picked Electric Sense. You can feel the electrical impulses of a creature living nearby. Cool. You always know how many living creatures are within 100 feet of you. You cannot be surprised by another creature. Um, and Mending Implant. You can touch a creature suffering from a negative condition and make a skill roll to heal that condition. Nice. Um... And then for my Nova abilities, I picked Healing Touch. You can spend one Nova point and touch a creature who regains all their health levels. And Energize Companion. You can spend one Nova point and touch a creature and give them a major positive condition. Nice. Ooh, very cool. We haven't talked yeah, much about... Yeah, because then maybe they'll be friends with me. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't really talked about conditions. Celeste, do you want to... Yeah, yo, so conditions are another really interesting part of this game um, because uh, the general numbers for enemies and like health levels and everything are very low in this game. So like starting out, you only start with three hit points unless you have some reason that that modifies things. And um, it's always assumed that any attack does one damage unless you have equipment or a special ability that says otherwise. Um, so to kind of balance that out, they have a uh, an interesting mechanic here called conditions, which are things that basically uh, raise or lower the complexity of skill rolls. Um, and the conditions themselves can be minor or they can be major. Um, and basically what happens, like a minor condition is something that you might get that will affect one skill. So say, for example, you know, instead of taking damage in combat, uh, maybe your GM rules that, you know, you get hit with a sword in the arm and you sustain some kind of injury there. So maybe they'll give you like a minor condition and they'll call it sprained arm or something. Mm. So that means specifically, if you try to use the melee skill, you will be have to increase the complexity of any checks by one. Uh, a major condition that can happen to you actually affects a whole branch of skills. So say, for example, you get like a blow to the head and you get a concussion uh, and the GM says, OK, well, I, I'm giving you a concussion, which feels like a major condition uh, for your your mental skills. So that means anytime you roll a mental skill, the complexity is increased by one because you have a head injury. Um, so it's it's a cool balance of like. And a lot of chances for the GM, instead of dealing damage, you can choose to deal conditions. Um, and in turn, a lot of these skills or abilities will give characters the opportunity to create um, condition advantages uh, for people. So like if you, you know, embolden your allies or like if you're in a good mood, you know, maybe your presence, um, you know, is is better. So you have, you know, all complexity checks for that are reduced by one if you have a minor condition Ooh. for that. Um, so it's a cool like checks and balances kind of system that they build in that rewards more um, storytelling other than like sort of just hack and slash uh, mechanics for combat. There's also uh, there is a third significant it's they're called significant oh, significant conditions. yeah I was trying to remember that, <laughs> I know I had to I had to look it up because I couldn't okay. remember the name either uh, that affect all of your skills yeah. and actually the only reason that I remember that off the top of my head that that existed is because conditions actually are another part of your damage tracker mm -hmm. uh, so like Celeste mentioned you start out with only three health levels is what they're called in this game. Um, and when you hit three health levels, you don't immediately die or go unconscious. You get the lowest level condition that you don't negative condition that you don't already have. So if I take three damage and I don't have a minor condition, I'm going to get a minor condition, right? If okay. I do already have it, I'll get a moderate. If I already have that, I get a significant. When you start being in danger of dying is when you've filled all your negative condition levels. You've got a minor and a moderate and a significant, and then you lose your three health levels, then you in trouble. Um, yeah. But it does <laughs> expand your hit points a little bit beyond the initial three. Yeah. 
And I will say, uh, while you all are, are sort of looking through your, your last abilities, the last step of this character creation is just to spend the Argent that you're given uh, as part of the economy marker of your culture uh, to get mm-hmm. equipment. And that's everything from uh, weapons and and personal shield generators and batteries for them to uh, sort of the, the category of things that we would maybe consider, quote unquote, adventuring equipment. So uh, lockpicks and smart tablets and... Uh, uh, you know, disguise uh, badges and things like that on down to just fun things like Atash has a tabletop role playing game in his inventory, in their inventory. Uh, So there's all kinds of things on there. Uh, There's like guitar strings and all kinds of (laughs) a brewer, a vintner's kit. Uh, Cameras. Uh, Mm -hmm. Atash also has a camera. Um, But that tab of the character mancer is great because it it uh, automatically populates how much argent you have based on your culture. Uh, It automatically subtracts from that total when you choose how many of what items you want. And then the super cool thing, uh, I I think, is that once you've filled out your inventory as much as you want, when you click next, it'll send your leftover argent into the game chat so that the rest of your party can see it and add it together and collect it so that once you start building your ship, you know exactly how much argent all of you have left over to apply to modules for your ship, which I think is sort of a cool way to handle all of that uh what can be admittedly as much as i enjoy it what can be sort of <laughs> tedious math yeah mm. uh, and narratively you know they also explain it as like you literally have to keep all your argent as a pool in yeah. a tank on your ship there's only one mm-hmm. argent tank so it's not an option <laughs> to have individual wealth right you have this one section where your money lives and grows <laughs> in a tank now, now I really want to create a character that has a giant Argent tank <laughs> and swims around with it named uh, Scrooge McDuck. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So I, I picked my abilities. So I got my abilities and my Nova abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, I started off with Skill Monkey, which I talked about before. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also took Natural Liar, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, reduces the complexity of skill rolls. Uh, made to verbally trick or deceive others by one uh, to a minimum of two. And then the other one was pressing the advantage, which I thought sounded really interesting. When the team has four or more advantages banked, uh, increase the dice sizes of all your social skills by one. Cool. Which sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, I guess that is another mechanic. Yeah, we should explain the advantage. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so in this game, um, on your turn, you know, when, when you go into combat, like we did mention before, you know, you can take as many actions um, as you want on your turn um, until you basically fail something. And one of the things you can do as an action is spend your turn creating an advantage. So this is specifically a combat mechanic. And this is something like, um, say, you know, you don't want to just run in there and like hit somebody or, or do something. You say like, oh, okay, you know, these these enemies are oncoming. I want to flip over this table so, you know, we can hide behind it or, you know, we can take some cover. Uh, And as the GM, I'd say, okay, that's great. So do your skill check. If that succeeds, you've created an advantage for your team. Um, And advantages are things that actually bank um, for your group uh, and form this this kind of pool. And of course, some Nova abilities like yours are triggered by using or spending these advantages, which anybody can grab. Um, You all have to agree as a group to grab or use an advantage. You can also choose to use an advantage to re-roll one dice as a skill. Um, mm. So say, you know, you, you're you like rolling complexity four, you know, you, you got two doubles, but you know, if you can re-roll one, maybe you can make the skill, you can spend that advantage to re-roll that dice. Um, mm. And what's kind of cool also is that the amount of advantages your team can have is directly linked to the livability rating of your ship. So the Mm. ship has two main, like, uh, stats. It's the ship health and the ship livability. And the livability is, like, how nice it is to live on your ship. You know, is Mm. it comfortable? Do you like it there? Um, And so your livability uh, caps the amount of advantages you can have. So if you have a great, super cool, fun clubhouse ship that has, like, livability five, um, that means that you can bank up to five advantages uh, during combat. I would like to point out that Wanda, our ship in Burning Daylight, has a livability of five because she's awesome. She's awesome. (laughs) 
Um, the other thing we should mention about livability, since we're talking about it, uh, it tells you the maximum number of advantages your team can have. It also tells you the maximum number of Nova points that each of you individually can store up mm-hmm. at once. Oh, OK. Very cool. Yeah. For my uh, my skills, I basically <laughs> there's a skill called inner glow. Which um, so you can make a skill roll to glow bright light that illuminates your space and all squares within five feet of you. And not only that, you become hot to the touch as you are illuminating. So anybody who hits you takes damage because you're like so bright and like (laughs) you're burning bright. Um, And so I just I love that. I love the idea of being like an Ulrin like diamond person um and that's how i fight and it's super scary um so i actually went ahead and took the next step which the prerequisite was inner glow to get to strong glow so when i do my inner glow i it actually lasts for 10 minutes and illuminates all squares within 10 uh 10 squares of me so i just like shine super bright (laughs) so bright um, (laughs) and just cause lots of problems uh, in combat which i just I loved it. I loved it. So that's what I picked. Very good. Uh, the Ulrin also have a Nova ability. Oh, what is it called? Let's see if I can find it. Is it Unleash Heat? Because uh, I took uh, that. Oh, no, <laughs> that's super. That's that's the kinder version. Uh, but the one that I'm thinking of. Oh, I've got to find it. Oh, Last Blast? Last Blast, Yeah. Yes. Oh, I took that, too. Um, oh, no. So, <laughs> so I know about Last Blast oh because gosh. one thing that Zavoy, uh, that is part of the Zavoy Inhabit Corpse ability uh, is that any physicality-based abilities, which, of course, is a uh, very gray area, mm-hmm. but any quote-unquote physicality-based abilities that the body that you are inhabiting had in life, you can access. Wow. Uh, and so I, the Ulrin that I inhabited also had Last Blast, which essentially makes you blow up and do damage when you reach zero health levels. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. uh, I'm taking you all with me. <laughs> yeah. If things had gone just a little differently uh, in our combat. Uh, we would have seen that. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I took every single Ulrans are all about explosions and light oh, and yeah. cool. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I'm all I'm all in. I'm all in with my ability. <laughs> yeah. Clearly you have created the Ulrin that in later years Atash would inhabit. Yeah. Oh oh gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh it's, 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 it's canon spooky. now. Um, <laughs> it's spooky, that's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, the Nova abilities that I took were making friends. Um, <laughs> Compared to explosions. <laughs> uh, we're know. different types of people. I can, I, you yeah, know, different yeah, strokes. Here we are. What can yeah, I say? Okay. You could say yeah, I'm the funny. two-face of the party. Ooh. 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 We could, but we won't. I, <laughs> I blow things up. I'm just the joker. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I got making friends where I can uh, kind of make friends with uh, standard weak or minion creatures that you can see oh. uh, as long as you're not in combat. Uh, so that's kind of uh, it feels like the you're infiltrating a base or something mm-hmm. like that. And you mm-hmm. see like random scientist person who works for the evil person that you're going against. And you're like, hey, I really need your help. And they're like, OK, I'll help you. Yeah, uh, we're on the same side. We're on the same side. <laughs> we speak the language of science. <laughs> and <laughs> exactly. And then the other one that I took was special discount, uh, so ah. I can get fifty percent off the normal cost uh, with a Nova point, nice. which Ooh, I think sweet. could come in very handy at times. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, between you and if I took the old ran like uh, discount for ships, uh-huh. we'd never pay. <laughs> we'd never <laughs> pay full yeah. price. <laughs> Our ship would be stacked. Uh huh. Yes. Ex- except I chose all the exploding light abilities because <laughs> yeah, you might as well, right? <laughs> Way to be selfish. <laughs> I'm who I am. Hey, that's right. That's, who I that's am. right. Perpetual GM. You know, when you put me in there, I just got to be <laughs> chaos, chaos Truly. player. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, I'm ready to buy some laser swords. All right, who who um, else has abilities that we need to point out? Yeah. Um, no, I think we did them all, didn't we? I think we, we did. Did I? Um, oh, I don't think I talked about my special ability because I, I picked it because it's a prerequisite for something I want later, but it essentially uh, allows my arm to turn into a gun. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you know, the Peacecraft for hating war, they are extremely effective. They're <laughs> very good at it. at it. They're very good at it. What can I say? Yeah. Almost like they were made for mm. that. It's funny. Yeah, it's oh, weird. weird. <laughs> weird. Um, okay, sweet. So for equipment. Oh, my gosh, I have so much money. So both I my... should not have that much money. How interesting. My culture gave me a ton of money. I've got um, 10,000. I've got 15,000. Oh, wow. no, I should have 10,000. Yeah. I had 7,500. Yeah, so uh, I know that the wealthy mm-hmm. economics, because that's uh, what my other character yeah. is from, that just straight off gives you 10,000 to start yeah, with. Yeah, I have uh, Suburban density also gives you some, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm not sure if there are others, other culture markers that give you Argent to start with. Those are the two that I know for sure. Yeah, I picked rural and poor. So. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. That's fine, because I picking out equipment is like my least favorite. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I just like, was like, mm, bandages, med kits, a shield, a tiny gun. Perfect. The power cells. Perfect. We're good to go. A video game. <laughs> Uh, right. There, there are. There's all kinds of. There's all kinds of stuff in this list. Everything from vehicles that are tens of thousands of argent uh, down. Yeah, like to, you can just get an armored car. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you nice. have, you know, mm-hmm. how much an is assault that one? tank? If you have like a hundred thousand, hundred thousand. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but but you'd win everything. You would right. win all the things. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, that's what it's about, really. There's clothes. There's weapons. Truly. There's uh, you know space items like your communication badges and your smart tablets and things like that. There are games, dice games and tabletop role playing games and video games. Uh, you can really sort of outfit yourself in a bunch of different ways. Um, the flying armor suit is very tempting. <laughs> if I'm not, Whoa. let's see, where is that? Oh yeah. Oh, well, that's, a, she's expensive, but maybe worth it. You know, Ooh, um, I'm in disguise bag. I feel like I need armor. If I'm going to be, you know, in there, just crystal blasting away. Uh, Certainly right. a thought. I am, there's a couple of... Oh, oh, I am getting a common disguise badge. Yeah. You can change the appearance of your clothes to anything you imagine as an action. Yeah, That's very cool. Yeah. Rent that runway. Um... Oh, some of the some of the items that you can pick out uh, in here have sort of specific mechanical ways that they work. Uh, You know, the weapons all have tags that uh, make them more effective in various ways. Uh, The the personal shield generator talks about how it requires power cells and it's an action to insert a power cell and all of that. And then some of it is just, uh, you know, like I said. I keep going back to it because it's the easiest game. thing, but right, exactly. A game system, like, <laughs> uh, just for funsies. Um, yeah. See, like, I think I'm going to buy a basic target robot for those who enjoy physical activity and want to stay fit. A basic target robot can be programmed to help practice various shooting and fighting sports. You're not going to spring for the advanced target robot? Whoa, I didn't even see that. Oh, It can no. fly. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, oh, we're doing that. Camera. Yep. God, yep. I would be, I would be so miserable to hang out with on a ship. <laughs> me just playing with my target robot constantly. I love that. All right. Well, I there we go. That. Bought an advanced target robot. Um, I'm gonna buy a board game so that I can talk someone into playing it with me. It. I hope it has really complicated rules. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oops. Um, so this is another screen where uh, once you've entered the number that you're purchasing, you should hit enter so that it adjusts your Argent remaining. Just tabbing out of it won't do won't cause it to do the math. I think I'll just do a basic camera. I don't need an advanced camera, even though <laughs> flying an advanced fancy. camera around uh, what? with uh, <laughs> the control. I think you need state of the art. I mean, I got, you know, my advanced target robot i imagine it's just like a drone like a cool sports drone that like squirts gatorade at me every once in a while Um, (laughs) for energy Ooh, do i fight with a charge staff i think so uh, there's sword in here i see a knife there is it's a laser Laser something laser Laser sword sword. there it is you know i gotta have a laser sword i mean on i mean it was the the you know, are, are pictured with a laser sword. Um, goodness, I am apparently I am the medic based on my inventory <laughs> alone. 
they're magically tuned to its wielder so that they are not harmed when touching the sword. Oh, oh they're lightsabers. <laughs> oh, they're lightsabers. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, lightsabers that can't yeah. hurt you. Uh, let's see. Okay, but who's buying small boat? <laughs> <laughs> I did see you that. You do need a small boat. Um... I'm just getting a bunch of tools, and Whoa. my arm is already a gun, so like... Okay, I'm gonna get the climate-controlled armor suit instead Ooh. of just an armor suit, uh, Ooh, so I can also pick. walk around in space. That's awesome. Getting a lockpick, um, although, is, can you pick locks with the mechanics tools? Probably not. No, there's a lockpick kit. I know, but... I you can make a it. case for anything in this game. That's right. That's you can right. you can pick locks with your mind um, if you make a strong enough case to your GM. So. <laughs> pick locks with my gun arm. <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's open. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't don't, wor- it. don't worry. It's fine. I need it. Oh no, I forgot a disguise badge, so I don't oh, need wait. a semi-formal outfit. Yeah. Communication badges allow you to talk to your ship, the magic intelligence on your ship, and translate all languages. Oh, I probably should get one of those. Yeah, yeah I got pretty those, are, well. those are sort of your general, like, if you're going to buy some rope, But I only want one. You know? no, yeah. Not 12. Yeah, yeah, just one. Yeah, just one. <laughs> <laughs> I bought 20 of these. Is that okay? <laughs> That's fine. Oh, but now I'm looking at the flying armor suit. Uh, right. I, I keep being like, well, if I'm going to spend five thousand on normal armor, I might as well spend six thousand on climate controlled armor. <laughs> but if I'm going to spend six thousand on climate control, I might as well spend seven thousand five hundred on a flying armor suit. I mean, <laughs> that's just a really good deal at the end. I of the mean, day. if you're going to do it, it's worth doing, right? You know what? Yeah, F it. Buy a tabletop roll for <laughs> That's sort of how I'm feeling about this. There's not going to be a ton of money left for the ship after I'm done with this list, but. What can you do? You know what? I'm going to buy a TTRPG yes. so I can practice yes. uh, other personas. <laughs> nice. I love that. Vampire Knuckles. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are not what they sound like. <laughs> the, va- the vampire weapons, I, I had to read twice. They do not, in fact, take health from others and give it to you. They actually take your health and use it to enhance Oh no! Weapon, yeah. Oh, that's They're also terrible. very illegal. It looks like. Uh, oh yes, well that too. They're also kind of expensive. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't need that. I've got forty one hundred left. Um, um, should I buy a charge chaku, which it looks like are nunchucks, but with electricity? Yes. I mean, yes. That's horrifying. <laughs> Wait, I want that, but I need to figure out how to get it. What do I not take? What do you mean uh, I have empty fields? I don't need this as much as I want it. Oh, I need a smart slab uh, if I'm going to do some science. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I'm going to science. To science, insert smart slab, uh, which basically feels like a tablet. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Surf the complinet. A complinet is like the internet. Yeah. In this game. Only where people are more complimentary. <laughs> well, one hopes. <laughs> well, depends where you hang out. Yeah. The internet powered by nice. By nice Wouldn't that be oh, amazing? <laughs> we truly are in a science fantasy game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fantasy part of it. Yeah. <laughs> so right. I just want a regular sword, so I don't think I'm going to... Why does everything have to be lasers? Is there a, is there a regular sword? No, I couldn't find one. That was the closest thing I found. I guess knife is the closest. Thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's knife. it's a knife. It's very larger big. knife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. a knife for a peace craft. Is they, fine. They come in normal. a variety of shapes and sizes. Right. It says. Okay, I'll, you know what? I'll buy a knife and you can you can have a, a peace craft mm-hmm. knife and it'll be and a sword. It, it allows <laughs> us to have the whole. You call that a knife? And then I pull out my laser sword. This is a... Wait, it's a laser sword. It's a laser sword. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, sorry, whoever our ship is going to be. I don't have much money for you. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I don't either. I think I'm going to... Yeah, I think I'm going to stop here. Um, Wait. 
face changing disguise badge. I wondered Whoa. if you were going to see that. I thought you got that already. <laughs> no, no, he got the one that changes your clothes, not your face. I know. Oh. Wow. Well, I, I have to have one laser pistol. With the face changing badge, you can change your clothes and your body to anything you can imagine. <gasps> Whoa, you don't need that other one. Get that. As long as your bodily appearance remains the same species as your ex. Oh, okay. okay. Now I got to fix my equipment because yeah. I need this. I feel like I would definitely have a headlamp, so I have to... I'm yeah. that guy. I'm that oh, guy. yeah. I'm a headlamp guy. Oh, was, yeah. I did buy four flashlights so that we can each have one. Oh, <laughs> you're the best. Aww. You want to make friends so bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> That's amazing. I also bought a lot of Band-Aids. All right, oh, well, yeah. I've got 1,100 left. So did I. Is that good? That's pretty it, low. It is. It is what it is. Uh, I think, it's fine. I, so we don't have to play. I, right. Well, exactly. That was I sort want of my a cozy feeling. ship. Um, I don't need this. So I, I think. I mean, look, my sample size is small. Uh, Celeste probably has a larger sample size for this, but I think for the Burning Bright cast, we all had between I want to say like two and four thousand argent yeah. left over. Um, very generally speaking, yeah. and that's I've, why you have a ship of uh, five. Livability five. Livability? Well, sort of. Uh, part of it is also because uh, there's a Kathuk special ability. One of our characters is a Kathuk. And there's a Kathuk special ability that, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it increases the livability of your ship because they're so pleasant they're so and homey. homey. Oh. They're homemakers, so the oh, ship feels nice. nice and, yeah. So I think I'm, I, I bought my ridiculously expensive suit of armor um, and a pistol and a sword So um, and my headlamp. So I think I'll end with 4,000 Argent, which was... Well, that's, that's fine. That's good. Okay, since you're going to be at 4,000, I'll I'll stick around 1,100 then. Uh, I, I decided my camera is kind of essential for my character's shtick. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. sure. I only left with 550, but I also only had 7,500 to begin with. <laughs> sure. But you bought flashlights for everybody, so you're... I you're did. I bought right. flashlights for everyone. <laughs> okay. That's All right. Nice. I'm going to click next before I spend any more money. Oh, yeah. Whew. That sounds Done. good. Whew. Next. You are about to navigate away. Uh, any available Argent will be sent to the group chat. Yeah. And that is not yep. reversible. So just make sure you are set. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. How do I name my character now? Oh, uh, it's right so here. Yeah, he's the, right there. Character or? Or you have, to have some empty mm -hmm. fields. That's oh, okay. Yeah, mine said I have empty fields too, but I don't know where those would be. Um, so I think, I have not been able to figure this out, but this is one of the other things that I think they need to update on the skills tab because there are slots for skills that you no starting character will fill in. Uh, gotcha. And I, I think I have clicked around as much as I can, and I think that's what it's talking yeah. about when it gives you that warning. Gotcha. Um, oh, my name is still Crystal Boy, so that <laughs> is <laughs> Crystal that's okay. Boy. My name is Hullabaloo. Hullabaloo and Crystal Hullabaloo. Boy. Oh, uh, I get to make a fun, <laughs> super lawn name. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool. One, two, three, Love four, it. five, six, seven, eight ish names all stuck together without a space. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. Ulran names have many vowel sounds, and their surnames are at least four syllables long. Oh, good. Oh, oh good. <laughs> I just, I think if you continue putting like eyes at the end of boy. Yeah. yeah. This is boy. the first line of. And then like a couple apostrophes got, that'll like yeah. break up the syllables. We've the got, first like, line of Eno names. <laughs> Eno naming conventions are very complicated. Yep. <laughs> cool. cool. You picked it. I know. I'm just, I'm just glad you didn't pick this, Amelia. Gotta read the fine print. <laughs> I know. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, Terra Boy, oh boy. Is that ter Terra Boy, oh boy? Yes. Terra Boy, oh boy. It has a, it has a little chart of what, what your name consists of. Mm -hmm. Consists of the name of the celestial body on which they were born, then the highest ranking parent's given name. That's great. Then the lowest ranking parent's given name. Also, okay. Uh, plus any formal organizations of which the Eno is part of. The Eno's pack name, their house name, ending in a suffix that indicates the Eno's gender. Wow. <laughs> e for mm -hmm. non-binary, A for uh -huh. women, O for man, given name, and finally their surname. Wow. Uh-huh. Ah. Yeah. Okay. 
They're, um, po- they're political. It's complicated. You got to know who you're meeting. So let's uh, <laughs> get back to me in like tomorrow. I'll have it. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> go. I'm gonna stick with Crystal Boy because okay, Crystal Boy. I'm um I'm just uh in insatiable because there's nothing that says that you can't buck convention. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Maybe your parents were like hippies. And well, were you like, can we're do what I get want. down to a familiar, a more familiar name. Um, but for short, we call you Steve. Yeah. Steve. You know, names are quite long and often short into a familiar name comprised of house and given name for close friends. Oh, as well are as we close friends? I'll change my name to Frongo. I just need you to answer this question. Are we close friends? <laughs> of course. Wait, are we friends? We just you me a flash uh, name. <laughs> Yes, story it's path. Done, 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 done. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Level up. <laughs> All right. So, what's the house name? Is that just a? That's your science thing, or that you that you picked. Is that? that was your house. Oh. Okay. So, or, and then my given name, and that can be anything. Mm-hmm. My my min maxing brain is somehow. Uh, <laughs> by this Eno name schema, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love I, that. I super duper appreciate all the example names that they already gave. Um, as a GM, it's great <laughs> just for NPCs having uh, something to draw from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, especially because they're so out right. there. Like. Yeah, I would love like a, a like a random name generator for the species. Ooh, if only. You know what? I bet it's coming oh. down the line because they have a lot of great uh, random generator tools built in already. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorite is um, in combat for GMs. They have the consequence table, Ooh. which is um, so basically in combat. If somebody fails, the GM can choose to take a point that they can use to do evil, nasty things or they can invoke a consequence um, that happens to a character. And the consequences table, it's interesting because it's like a hundred different things, but they're all like a couple word long prompts um, that aren't super specific, but they're very evocative. So it's like something breaks or like something falls or, you know, so it's, it's Mm. cool to interpret that in the moment. It can mean a lot of different things depending on your field of combat. So I definitely think more random generated tables are are in the future for for development, which is very yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, Frongo, Frongo, Crystal Boy is ready, ready to fight. Okay, so I love it. by this convention, then uh, my given name is Tiana, so I go by or Tiana. Just trying to put together a um a chart of how I can name my character. <laughs> and I need a spreadsheet for this one. Yeah, but I mean, from that point, that's that's basically it. You're ready that's to it. dive. We've made characters. Yeah. yeah. You've made characters and you're you're ready to get started playing Burn Bright. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, the character mancer makes it so easy uh, yeah, to really walk does. through. And even the, even the little things that are a little bit confusing now inside the system, I, I definitely see those being updated um, and changed mm-hmm. as time yeah. goes on. Yeah. I think, um, I think in the interest of time, we'll skip the, uh, the ship building. Sure. Uh, yes. Because it's already almost yeah, three I'm hours. I'm fading fast. But yeah. Oh my gosh. I would want to create a ship if we had time. <laughs> 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 Let's just assume it's fabulous. Yeah, it is pretty fabulous. Um, at least a livability of four because that oh, would yeah. allow me to use my uh, special ability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of cool ships to choose from. Um, our module, specifically Burning Daylight, gives you three options to pick from, so it kind of limits it. But included in the base game um, are stats for a bunch of different types of ships that are so cool and so innovative. Yeah. Um yeah, and then working together with your team to uh, come up with the magic intelligence, so the personality that runs your ship, because they actually are like a character, you know, of your crew. They have a personality, yeah. and you know, they make decisions and they interact. So that's a really fun thing to do during session zero. Um, you know, when you when you are preparing to play this game. Awesome. Oh. Are you good, Ryan? I, I think. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. I read something wrong. Actually, you go by your given gendered name, 
and then your given name, not the organization or the house. Ah, this is complex. <laughs> I, we promise uh, everyone listening at home that it's not as complex for the other species. Just, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> just Ryan. Just this one. <laughs> just you know. <laughs> Wel- welcome to... Uh, Activating my trap card, apparently, yeah. of uh, <laughs> naming, naming <conventions>. something. <laughs> okay, so Tiana is definitely part of my naming scheme, and I'm wondering, I could actually go by uh, that as my gender name, because I want my character to identify as a woman. Um, well, there you go. So, uh, Tiana, uh, what's, what's a good second name? What's a good given name? I'm going to throw something at me. Anybody? Uh, uh, Roswin. Roswin. I like it. Tiana Roswin. I like it. You sound like a classy broad. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. And that's just my real name, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But then you also are living a double life, so we know you by a different right. name. You, it's that's, a, so tell that's, us about you now. You that's part circles, of my first event. So. Circles within circles. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> I don't need that until we're actually playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Oh, lordy. Wow, All we right. did it. We did, we did it. it. We did it. Awesome. We made some characters. Like yeah, we did. So yeah. If, Pretty painless, right? Yeah, it was, it's not too bad. It's uh, just follow the prompts and, and do the thing. Yeah. And you're good mm-hmm. to go. I wish um, all things in life were that easy. I don't Truly. Know. Right? <laughs> if only. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. I had a really good time. Yeah, this was great. Um, yeah. I enjoyed this a lot. I really like the world and like, mm-hmm. this is good. Yeah. It was good. Well, thank you so much for having <laughs> us. I'm yes. uh, every, every opportunity to learn more and delve more into the world of Burn Bright. It's just been an absolute delight. Um, so excited to share it with more folks. Absolutely. And you got to build a character this time. And I got to make a character <laughs> yeah. this time. My crystal explosion boy. Oh yes. man. One day I'll play you. One day. <laughs> the number of times people say that on our show too. Like I'm a GM. I never get to make characters. <laughs> like so much fun. It's real. <laughs> um, Eugenio, do you want to remind everybody where they can find you online and what kind of stuff you're up to? Absolutely. Yeah. So you can find me on Twitter is probably the, the most central place. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, I am the DM and producer of the actual play d d podcast called The Last Refuge. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at, at DND Last Refuge, and we release new episodes every Wednesday. Uh, for all the rest of my stuff, you can just check out my website, EugenioVargas.com. I'm not going to spell it. It'll be in the notes or something. I'm sure, uh, but you're driving anyway, so you can't write it down. Uh, so uh, pull over very carefully, turn your flashers on. Turn your- uh, <laughs> Get the napkin Take from this Dunkin' down. Donuts. Get the That's pen. Right. Write it down. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, you can check out the episode notes uh, and go to eugeniovargas.com. Uh, it does have stuff from my from my other life also as a as a theater artist, but there is a tab there and a page there for for gaming where you can find uh, the adventures, the D and D adventures I've published on the DM. Guild uh, links to my Twitch channel where I stream video games a couple times a week and all that other good stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, Celeste, how about yourself? Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. My name is Celeste Conowich. Uh, the best way to keep up with all the shows, streams, things I'm writing is definitely to follow me on Twitter at C Conowich, or you can check out my website, CelesteConowich.com, for the entire catalog and schedule of all the things. Um, other than <laughs> that, yes, please, if you like Dungeons and & Dragons and want to listen to more of it after listening to The Last Refuge, you can look up Venture Maidens, which is an actual play D&D podcast that releases every other Sunday. Um, we also stream all of our episodes Wednesday nights on Twitch uh, slash The Venture Maidens. And, of course... Hey, if you like this system, you should head over to Roll20 app on Twitch Thursday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, You can check out Eugenio and I playing through Burning Daylight. Um, And we are going to be playing that until sort of the end of September, I believe, Mm -hmm. um, as we're going through the module there. So please do check that out. Um, All our backlog of videos are also posted on the Roll20 YouTube channel. So if you want to see Burn Bright in action, uh, if you have any questions or anything, uh, we would love to chat with you. So, you know, Mm -hmm. follow Roll20. Yeah, come uh, hang out with us in, in Twitch chat. Um, just check out the show. 
Well, thank you both for joining us, and thank you to everyone for listening. Please join us again next week for our discussion episode. Mm. Ah. Woo. I really hope you all enjoyed the character creation for this game as much as I did. Uh, just wait until next episode where I reveal my character's full name. It only took me one and a half months to get right. But before we head out, I just wanted to remind you all about the Audioverse Awards finalists voting that is going on right now until the end of October. And to absolutely check out my new campaign, streaming every other Friday starting October 16th on my Twitch channel. Links to both of these are going to be in the show notes. Also, if you like what we're doing here on the show, please consider leaving us a review. We are checking all of Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podchaser, Facebook, and even Podcast Addict often. So leaving a review in any of those places will really brighten our day. Also, it really does help us out. We currently don't have any more reviews to read on the show, and that is very sad to both of us. So send some cheer. And let us know how we're doing in that official review capacity. For now, let's close things down for the episode and get to those show blurbs. We're really glad you joined us for this episode, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care, everyone, and keep making those amazing people. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Modifier. Modifier is an interview show hosted by Megan Dornbrock, all about why and how people change games. From the hobbyist to the professional, from house rules to publication, we all have in mind a better way to play. What's yours?